But in the meantime, uh, since I was at home and calling up everybody about macrobiotics, uh, there was a lady called Elaine Nussbaum who had uh, recovered from uh, cancer. And she was organizing a seminar, and the lecturer was um, Marie Sunaida, who was one of the uh, disciples, early disciples of Michio Kushi. And that was way out in New Jersey, but we went over. We listened to him, and I was impressed. And I had his consultation, and I continued there. Then in about uh, two months' time, uh, around uh, the 10th of June, he was supposed to come to New York and re-examine me, but he called me and said, look, he couldn't come. Why don't you come to Baltimore where he was operating? So I said, no, Baltimore is a bit too far. But the lady who uh, first introduced me to this uh, macrobiotics rang me out of blue and said, look, I have an appointment with Michio Kushi, but I can't keep it. Why don't you go in my place? So I said, well, it's a godsend. You know, I wanted to see him. So we rang him and said, hey, could we come? He says, by all means, come. So we went up to flew up to Boston and so uh, Michio Kushi, and we had his consultation. And you know what? We talked about world peace rather than my cancer. <laughs> anyway, what he uh, uh, told me was that to be on a very, very strict macrobiotic diet. I didn't have any, uh, of course, meat, uh, fish, or uh, dairy, but uh, I didn't have any uh, flour products, no bread, no pasta, and no oil either. Just brown rice and uh, uh, some seasonal vegetables and some seaweed. I continued that for about nine months, and I didn't deviate at all. I was very faithful to what he had to tell me. And uh, the first two months, I was, uh, and my wife also, follow the same diet. And my kids were in, in the universities, uh, but they were very, very supportive. And all my colleagues in the UN were very, very friendly and supportive. So I could just carry on with this. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> for about two months, I had tremendous uh, symptoms of discharge. You know. All the toxins uh, came out. And I lost further 10 kilos. Then I thought I was uh, dying of malnutrition, you see. <laughs> but uh, in about two months' time, my, I could see that my stamina hit the bottom. Then afterward, it shot up like this. Then I was very, very confident. I knew I was doing right. And I didn't feel like dying at all. And in the meantime, uh, what helped me most was, uh, in addition to this macrobiotic diet, there was a book uh, given to me by a friend of mine, which is called um, Getting Well Again by Dr. Simonton, which described uh, how you conduct a kind of simple meditation. It's called imagery. You image that you're getting well. And I practiced it, and I found that it, it worked tremendously. So I continued that, and I believe that helped me because I didn't have any feeling for cravings of anything. So you know, mentally, I was assisted by this exercise. And physically, I was assisted tremendously by macrobiotics. So I figured that uh, through macrobiotics, I changed the whole body, my constitution, you see, because I was living on very high protein, high calorie American food. But now, very strict uh, macrobiotics. So my whole constitution changed. All the toxins were discharged. Then my mental attitude was right because of this um, uh, imagery. 
And again, that helped to boost up my immunity, level of immunity. Then uh, friends of ours also advised that I should perhaps take up a yoga so that I could stretch my body. So I said, all right. Then again, I took it. And sometimes I hated it because I normally I was very, very tired. But after yoga exercise, I felt quite refreshed. So I said, oh my God, it works. See? Now, of course, uh, while you uh, continue all this, your, your mind is always um, going back and forth. What, what I mean is that you are thinking in terms of death and life. Now, for the first time in my life, that there was something beyond what we could call scientific understanding, something much greater, including death and so on and so forth. So I was uh, becoming very philosophical. And uh, typically I was thinking, when do I die? And how do I die? But in the meantime, how do I live kind of thing, you see? So one becomes fairly religious. Then I became religious. And uh, I knocked on the door of Zen Buddhist temple in New York. And uh, then I wanted to learn how to meditate in a Buddhist way. So my wife and I together again went over to the Buddhist temple, learned how to meditate. Then I immediately felt that I was so peaceful, at peace with myself. Then of course, when you're at peace with yourself, you're peaceful with other outside world, you see. So I liked it, so I continued it. 